I didn't choose for this to happen to me. It's just something that happened. <laughs> It had nothing to do with me and my appearance. It was kind of my escape. I didn't feel attractive in my own body, but that's a symptom of something else. Intellectually, you know your worth is not dependent on your appearance. I wanted, at the time, to be a supermodel. In short, it was because I wasn't truly pleased with what I saw, but that was based on what I wanted to be and what is accepted in the industry in which I found myself. I felt like I had no control over myself or my surroundings. So I turned to my body as a thing that I could control in order to give me a sense of stability. People assume that everyone with an eating disorder is anorexic, which is simply not true. There's binge eating disorder, there's bulimia, there's a lot of eating disorders that still allow you to eat. When I would talk to people about it in my family, they were like, well, it's really easy. You can just eat a roti and ki and you'll be good to go. Like, that's not how it works. It's a way to manage your feelings. It's a way to not feel your feelings. It is a mental illness. That's what you have to confront. The worst thing that you could do to someone with an eating disorder is to say that you don't look thin enough to have an eating disorder. You can definitely be overweight or underweight or any type of weight and have an eating disorder. Eating disorders aren't just like physically harming, they're so psychologically harming and I think focusing on sensational aspects, you're ignoring the fact that sufferers are in a lot of pain. Mental illness doesn't give a shit about gender. They affect all races, weights, genders, sexual orientations. People think it's a gendered illness. It just created a lot of stigma for me to deal with. If you're male and you have an eating disorder, don't feel like your struggle isn't real. So, so boys and anybody can get an eating disorder, and they do. No, 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 no. It's not just like, oh, I'm eating and I'm okay. A lot of eating disorders don't mean that you stop eating. It was a mental process, and it took several years for me to become happy with myself again. You can't tell by examining someone's eating habits unless you're like spying on them for like three months straight, and that would just be creepy. <laughs> Recovery for me was a long, time. <laughs> it was really a battle. It wasn't just like, okay, I'm ready to get better today. It was a series of small steps and then a series of backward slides. I thought like I would never recover. I thought uh, like, what am I going to do on my wedding day? Like I can't eat the wedding cake. It's still like every day when I should eat, when I shouldn't eat, and can I get over the fact that like food is so social and in my life every day. Recovery has been a lot of managing discomfort. It's a practice, it's not a destination. That eating disorder voice I had, like it's still there. I just know to ignore it more now. It's kind of like a roommate in my head that <laughs> I just share a space with and he's always there. I've just learned to ask him to be a little less messy. I got to this place of appreciating myself more than judging myself. After you get to that point, you just like go out and do you. It doesn't affect my personality. It doesn't affect my capabilities. It does not mean that I'm broken. It does not mean I ever was broken. It doesn't mean I'm weak. It doesn't mean I'm stupid. It doesn't mean I'm vain. And we're all just trying to live the best life that we can and be the best people that we can be. And we're trying to feel the best way that we can. If you've never experienced an eating disorder, you just kind of have to accept that that's an experience you don't understand. And I just need you to empathize with me.